crazy. In fact, for, for a lot of nuclear power stations, um, uh, unless it's sort of in a natural disaster zone, like question mark. <laughs> Elon Musk has issued an urgent warning, highlighting the gravity of nuclear energy abuse and the urgency to abolish it. An energy battery with a capacity of more than 100 kilowatts per square meter has been developed and thoroughly solved the storage problem, shocking both experts and people with an interest in its renewable energy. So what makes this battery so unique? And are the reports about it actually true? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. Right now, more than 90% of the world's electricity comes from heat sources, like coal, natural gas, nuclear energy, but the truth is the methods aren't particularly effective. Moreover, it also causes serious environmental problems, such as greenhouse effect, depletion of fossil energy resources, and so on. Finding a new form of renewable energy that is less dependent on the sun, wind, or other natural energy sources is therefore important. Engineers at MIT and the NREL have designed a heat engine with no moving parts. Their new demonstration showed that it converts heat to electricity with over 40% efficiency, which is a performance that's better than that of traditional steam turbines. But Asagan Henry, Robert N. Noyce, career development professor in MIT's Department of Mechanical Engineering, explained that his team already has a well-defined pathway for reaching 98% reflectivity to squeeze out an extra 10% of overall efficiency in the cell, which will make it reach an overall efficiency of 50%. And if these cells could reach that 50% efficiency mark, a 1 square meter cell could generate around 100 kilowatts. And if you're thinking, 100 kilowatts? Well, that can't be right. A similarly sized solar panel only makes about 3 to 400 watts, or about 1 25th as much. Which goes to show you how much energy and, subsequently, light tungsten, puts out when heated to 2400 degrees Celsius. Now let's attempt to compute an array of 30 by 33 modules. That's about 990 square feet, and it'll have a total capacity of around 99,000 kilowatts, or close to 100 megawatts. The graphite blocks can hold enough heat to, ho, 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 to keep the cells generating power for roughly 10 hours. 100 megawatts per hour for 10 hours means a site could provide a thousand megawatt hours, or one gigawatt, which is enough to power tens of thousands of homes. The heat engine is a thermal photovoltaic cell, similar to a solar panel's photovoltaic cells that passively captures high energy photons from a white hot heat source and converts them into electricity. The team's design can generate electricity from a heat source of between 1,900 to 2,400 degrees Celsius, or up to about 4,300 degrees Fahrenheit. TPV cells were the last key step toward demonstrating that thermal batteries are a viable concept, says Professor Henry. This is an absolutely critical step on the path to proliferate renewable energy and get to a fully decarbonized grid. Not only has it proved effective through tests, but grid-scale thermal batteries can also replace fossil fuel power plants. We can get a high efficiency over a broad range of temperatures relevant for thermal batteries, Henry says. The researchers plan to incorporate the TPV cell into a grid-scale thermal battery. The system would absorb excess energy from renewable sources such as the sun and store that energy in heavily insulated banks of hot graphite. When the energy is needed, such as on overcast days, TPV cells would convert the heat into electricity and dispatch the energy to a power grid. With the new TPV cell, the team has now successfully demonstrated the main parts of the system in separate small-scale experiments. The cell in the experiments is about a square centimeter. For a grid-scale thermal battery system, Henry envisions the TPV cells would have to scale up to about 10,000 square feet, or about a quarter of a football field and would operate in climate-controlled warehouses to draw power from huge banks of stored solar energy. He points out that an infrastructure exists for making large-scale photovoltaic cells, which would also be adapted to manufacture TPVs. There's definitely a huge net positive here in terms of sustainability, Henry says. 
The technology is safe, environmentally benign in its life cycle, and can have a tremendous impact on abating carbon dioxide emissions from electricity production. They are working to integrate the parts to demonstrate a fully operational system. From there, they hope to scale up the system to replace fossil fuel-driven power plants and enable a fully decarbonized power grid, supplied entirely by renewable energy. On the other hand, the rise of renewable energy sources such as solar and wind is creating a new paradigm in the energy sector. More and more electricity is produced when there is no demand, and this is causing much of this electricity to be lost. In this situation, it might seem logical to harness that surplus renewable energy to produce heat and power when needed. However, we are faced with a technological problem, which is lacking a system that is capable of storing and producing this energy economically on demand. So then, would TPV systems offer any practical and suitable storage options? Researchers at the Solar Energy Institute of the Polytechnical University of Madrid Universidad Politecnica de Madrid Anyways, they found a possible solution, a system that could store large amounts of renewable electricity for long periods of time, very cheaply, and provide heat and electricity on demand. According to the study, latent heat thermovoltaic batteries could store large amounts of surplus renewable electricity. A large part of this electricity will be produced when there is no demand, so it will be sold at a very low price in the electricity market, said Alejandro Datas, the IES UPM researcher who leads the project. It is therefore essential to store this electricity in a very cheap system since it would not make sense to store something so cheap in a very expensive box. Therefore, storing surplus electricity in the form of heat makes a lot of sense since it is one of the cheapest ways of storing energy. The key to this system refers to the way that stored heat is converted into electricity. When silicon melts at over a thousand degrees Celsius, it shines like the sun. Therefore, it is possible to convert radiated heat back into electricity using photovoltaic cells. So-called thermophotovoltaic generators are like miniature photovoltaic installations that can produce up to 100 times more energy than a conventional solar power plant. In other words, if a square meter of solar panel produces 200 watts, a square meter of TPV panel produces 20 kilowatts. And not only the power, but the conversion efficiency is also higher. The efficiency of thermophotovoltaic cells ranges between 30 to 40 percent, depending on the temperature of the heat source. So, do you think that the future of photovoltaic cells looks bright? And will it be widely used and replace nuclear power? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs and green technology. Once again, thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.